Murden of Chaos, and I made things unnecessarily complicated. Before we start this video, I'd like to issue a warning. If you still suffer from PTSD to your high school math class, then I suggest you leave now, before you start blaming me for your math-induced panic attacks. Caution. Side effects of math may include panic attacks, psychosis, partial or full paralysis, and even death. Do not try this at home. Now, if you are still here, enjoy the video. Middle-earth, the beautiful but wild continent that forms the scenery for one of the greatest cinematic masterpieces of all time, the LEGO Lord of the Rings video game. In between the highs and lows of the hero's quest, there is a level that houses the highest high and the lowest low of all. I am of course talking about the Mines of Moria, more specifically the showdown between Gandalf and the Balrog on the bridge of khazad Dûm. On the off chance you've been stuck in a mine yourself for the past 25 years and don't know this scene, it goes as follows. You get the iconic line you shall not pass! only for it to be immediately followed by a literal fall into the great depths of the abyss below. As a speedrunner that has watched this scene and the following fall numerous times, I began to wonder something. We all know the dwarves delve too greedily. But how greedily? How deep? How deep is the chasm of Khazad-dûm? Before we can start calculating, we need to time how long the Balrog is actually falling for. As you can let this level go on forever if you don't play, I'll take my latest speedrun for timing. This should give us the shortest time possible and thus the minimum depth of this pit. We start the timer when the Balrog starts falling, so we can take his starting velocity as zero. The end time will take when the screen goes wired right before they hit the water at the bottom. This gives us a total falling time of almost exactly 3 minutes. To calculate the depth of the pit, let's call that y, we need to know the speed with which the Balrog is falling, so we'll need to know its acceleration. Newton's second law of motion states that the force equals mass times acceleration. The forces working on the Balrog are the gravitational force pulling it down and the drag force slowing its fall. We also write the acceleration as a derivative of speed or V prime for easier use later. Let's start with the gravitational force. It is defined like this, with m being the mass of the Balrog and g the gravitational constant, being about 9.8 meters per second squared on Earth. Hold it right there! Lego Model Earth is not on Earth. Lego Arda cannot just be classified as Earth. No, we need to calculate the gravitational constant from scratch. Back to voice over me. If we time the fall of a jumping character and drop that together with the height of the jump into this formula, we're able to easily calculate the gravitational constant for LEGO Middle Earth. This comes out to 0.6 meters per second squared, which is incredibly low, even lower than half of the moon's gravity. The first conclusion of this video is that LEGO Arda is very small, which I guess is fitting for a LEGO world. The mass of the Balrog I calculated from the parts list of a Balrog model I found online. Now that we know the gravity, let's take a look at drag. The formula for drag is this and it depends on the drag coefficient, the frontal area of the object, the density of the air, and velocity. Velocity is time dependent, and the air density is not something we can measure in the game, so let's just take a number I found on the internet. This leaves us with the drag coefficient, which is dependent on the shape, and the area. At first, I wanted to get these values from a digital simulation, but I turned out to be too dumb to figure out how to do that and I didn't want to spend LEGO prices on an actual real-life model for practical experiments. So we'll have to settle on a bit less exact method. Looking at the Balrog model from behind, we can differentiate two different areas. The flat wings with a high drag coefficient, and the round body with a lower one. We'll also leave out these flames on top, because the game Balrog doesn't have solid flames. 
With the number of colored pixels and the pixel to length ratio I got from measuring the studs, we can find the drag force and function of the velocity. Then, if we plug these two equations into our first one, we get... Oh no. We get a differential equation. So, I looked up online how to solve nonlinear differential equations in a MATLAB, uh, I mean MATLAB, dropped in our values, set the condition for the starting velocity to be zero, and pressed run to get this beast of a formula for the speed. Let's plot that, to make it a bit more readable. As you can see, the speed reaches a terminal velocity and then stays constant. Now the only thing left to do is to integrate this to get the distance and press run. Whoa, hold on, hold on. This isn't right. Sometimes Gandalf is standing on the bell rock. So of course his mass needs to be added as well because a higher mass equals a higher terminal velocity. <sighs> okay. Let's split the fall up into six sections depending on if Gandalf is on the bell rock or not. Every section will have the end velocity of the previous section as its starting velocity. This gives us six different velocity profiles. All that's left now is to integrate these over the time each section takes to get the total distance traveled. And there you have it. In my hand I'm holding, well, a piece of paper. But on this piece of paper I've written down the exact depth of Lego's chasm of Casa Doom. Calculated with 100% accuracy. There can be no doubt at all that what I've calculated here is the truth and nothing but the absolute truth. So, to distance it. 325 meters and 60 centimeters. That's quite a lot actually. If you scale that up to normal person height, that's more than 14 and a half kilometers. That's deeper than the deepest man-made hole on Earth. That's like dropping a Lego figure from the Eiffel Tower. And yes, I would have done that if it were allowed. But in clause 18 of the visit regulations of the Eiffel Tower, it states that it is prohibited to throw objects from the monument, so... Bummer. But it does save me a trip to Paris, so that's nice. Fools!